what did you think Kumar would be like hanging out with before you met him? And then like, how did it turn out to be? I mean, really strangely, like exactly. It was exactly how I imagined it. I imagine he'd be a really nice guy. He's Mr. Little Jeans, you know? He says, best play ever, man. Like at the end of Rushmore, like that's the coolest line in my favorite movie ever. And so I just imagine that he was the best, coolest person ever, and seriously, he was. <laughs> side and I saw this short little old man walk in and I immediately recognized him as Pagoda from the Royal Tenenbaums and the first thing I did was text my sister and say you're not gonna believe who just walked into the theater. The New York premiere of Modus Operandi. Yep, at the IFC Center and Kumar just showed up. I went looking for him and there he was. He was just outside waiting to waiting in line to go in. He wanted to, to see the movie. Yeah, he somehow heard about the movie. It's a real honor to see him in, in the audience. And then afterwards, I invited him to the after party. So Modus played at the IFC Theater in New York, and I went there, and there was a party and everything, and uh, Danny Trejo was there, and Sasha Gray was there, and Mark Borchart, and his daughter Dawn, and Cookie Johnson, and a bunch of uh, Frankie and a bunch of these uh, funny people from Milwaukee were also there. Uh, we exchanged information. I didn't think much of it, just because you meet people all the time, actors, actresses, directors, and nothing comes of it. But um, I had given him a phone call a few months later and asked him if he'd be interested in uh, being in this new film that I was shooting. And uh, the rest is history, as they say. Three years later at this point, and, I'm, and so he's finally going to come and be in the movie. There was a scene where the main character goes into a hotel and he buys a room and he goes to, he goes to sleep. So he's in the scene as the attendant. In the same town there's a haunted house that of course he works in as one of the characters. So he's an attendant by day and then he, at night he works at this haunted house. He's a, uh, like a maniac dentist. And then he's in like this dream sequence where it's me and Frankie's character and him walking around in this cemetery in Wauwatosa. For this particular scene in the hotel room, he had, uh, there was like an old Playboy that was in the bathroom there from like the 60s or 70s. Kumar had this idea where he wanted to take the Playboy, look through it and just be like, ah, yes, very good. And then he shuts the Playboy and then he looks at the camera and he says, this is my Bible. When I come all this one here, oh, this is my Bible, thank you. And it's funny because like, at the time, I, you know, there's, it doesn't make sense. Eventually, he, I just let him do it. So, okay. so rolling. And close the magazine. That's my Bible. Cut. Okay, good. Let's move on.
I don't know. How do you want me to sit? I mean, I'm fine. No, that's fine. Yeah. Are my sh legs in the shot? <laughs> I'm currently working on a film uh, presently titled Snapshot. When he was in Milwaukee, we shot scenes of him in a Mercedes, this, like a 1960s Mercedes with um, two beautiful women and uh, uh, he was doing an exchange at this uh, outdoor, uh, like, amphitheater. I think Frankie yeah. called us earlier in the day and said, Kumar's here, do you want him in your movie? He'll be here for, like, two days. <laughs> and we were like, uh, sure, but we, 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 gotta, we gotta figure out a part for him. How long you kept this up, old friend? How much you longer? I don't know. Come on, wake up, wake up! How long? Maybe like six months. How much longer? Well, let's see, it's kind of hard to boil down. It's a feature-length version of Hamlet, a little bit more like a B-movie, and it's all green screen. Kumar plays a sort of uh, old friend of Horatio's that kind of drops in occasionally, sort of check in on him. when he's working in like a tech support call center, working uh, in a spaceship loading bay. Open the loading bay doors. Opening the loading bay doors. out there for 16 hours you know he was he would just be running the whole day just doing stuff I'm doing so much more than, than what I would ever do anywhere else and he said but I'm happy to do it I want you know I want to help them because they need help and I want to help them you know so he would just be this you know he was it wasn't a complaint it was an acknowledgement of, of how much he put himself out there it was kind of a neat experience to have Kumar here and so many people were so excited to have him here that they wanted to, to use him on their projects, and um, I think Kumar just had a blast being part of all of it. He seemed like he was up for anything as long as he was here. Yeah, okay. You got That's it. right. You got the it. Next line. All of this has happened before. And all of this will happen again. He has this book that he carries around, and it's like, it is his life and pictures and it kind of goes along with a lot of stories he's telling. It was really cool to see that. And he had this one image that really struck me of him. He must have been in his late 20s. And it was really interesting contrast to see him in his 90s now and then this person who he was, you know, lifetimes ago. It was a really cool, cool image and we shot it right here and it was just a cool, like, lifespan type photograph. My name is Kumar Palana. I'm a pizza eater. I like the spicy food. So we did, we made the commercial and then um, we came back to Milwaukee and uh, I never ended up own, owning the pizza place. He was a trooper for sure and I mean he was in great shape mentally, physically. Decided to start drawing Kumar and um, I think he had a striped shirt on and he um, he was just talking and talking, but he wasn't moving around too much, so I just did a little portrait of him, and we ended up using that as a flyer for Heavy Hands, um, and I gave him the original one, which he was really happy to get. I think it was just that constant, every part of his life was being engaged. You know, there wasn't like, he wasn't someone who was shrinking, he was someone who was always expanding, and he was bringing everybody into his space and his consciousness. <laughs> Jimmy Lee stole something from associates of mine. What it is, 
When he was back in California, he called Sean and left a voicemail to Sean and me saying um, that he had a really great time and thanked us. And at the end of the voicemail, he said, I love you. And that was really sweet. And we really liked to hear that because we loved him too. Yeah, I'll get teary eyed. And I called Kumar and I was talking to him and, and Kumar, you know, he's a father, you know, so he knows what's up. And Heather's pregnant and he's like, oh, that's great, that's great, that's great. He's like, here's the thing, um, she's pregnant, but you can tell everybody that you're married. I'm not worried about what people think about that or whatever. He's like, no, no, no. It's like, it doesn't have to be the truth. You don't actually have to get married, but just tell everyone that you are married. Loving and caring individual you'll ever meet in your entire life, so it was just an honor to uh, to say he was my friend. You look like at the span of like people's lives and how many times was there a place for him like here where he went and met all these people and how many times is there going to be like a Kumar like him that comes to Milwaukee? Last time I saw Kumar, he was getting into a car to leave. We were all saying goodbye. And I said, Kumar, I just want to let you know that I really enjoyed the day. I thought it was great working with you, and it was really a pleasure to meet you. And he said, hey, man, you have my number? You call me anytime you want. I said, all right, well, maybe I will.